at you. Look at all of you. Okay, all right. That's enough. That's enough. Calm down. Put your clothes back on. It's Friday, so you know what that means. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He gets his hair cut at the Lego factory. Co-host of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show. Buck Sexton. <laughs> he hails from San Francisco, which means he loves the smell of urine. Actor and comedian Scott Caparo. She cheered at the end of Old Yeller. Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. And psychics need a GPS to read his palm. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Tyrus. All right. Before we get to some news stories, let's do this. Greg's Leftovers. Mmm. Yeah, leftovers, where I read the jokes we didn't use this week, and as always, it's my first time reading them. So if they suck, we'll put Joe Mackey in a barrel and send him over Niagara Falls. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Applauding Joe Mackey's death. I like this audience. James Comer says that Joe Biden, as vice president, corresponded with Hunter Biden using the pseudonym Robert L. Peters. I guess that's better than his current fake name, President. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. This week, Biden told kids visiting the White House, quote, I know some really great ice cream places around here, and daddy owes you. <laughs> that's not the joke. It's not the, that's real. He added that if they notice any children's hair in the dessert, that's just his favorite topping. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> to remove carbon from the atmosphere, the Biden administration is funding projects that will use giant vacuums to suck it up. <laughs> They're also funding a project that will use a drug addict to snort it. <laughs> ah, I love him. Oh. Tampa Bay Rays star player, <laughs> Wander Franco. That's his name, Wander Franco. This is hard. It's being investigated amid rumors that he may be dating a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> Don't judge. <laughs> Scouts say they're not surprised because he was very successful in the minors. <laughs> <laughs> Little baseball humor, cat. There's the minor leagues and the major leagues. According to a new study, erectile dysfunction cases in the U.S. have doubled and experts believe they figured out the cause. <laughs> yeah. It writes itself. According to a letter Obama reportedly sent to a former girlfriend in 1982, he imagined making love to men daily, prompting Michelle Obama to reply, I haven't made love to one in decades. <laughs> Gratuitous. But Obama imagining making love to men well, I guess that explains this. Oh, like you could do better. <laughs> Good. You could, but anyway. Republican candidates descended on the Iowa State Fair last week to mingle with the people and load up on carnival food. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie arrived two weeks early. <laughs> It's because he's fat, I know. <laughs> Happy birthday to Robert Redford, who turned 87 today, and to his hairpiece, which turned 42. <laughs> A male powerlifter broke women's records in the Western Canadian Championship. Women are beginning to lose count of how many sports records are broken by men because it's happening a lot, and they're terrible at counting. <laughs> what? Yes, that's what a sexist would say. You're learning. See, this is all about educa ed educating people. <laughs> Scientists say men are more likely to say, I love you first. The research also revealed women are more likely to say, get away from me, nerd. <laughs> that's cute. A stomach churning video went viral showing a bull goring a Spanish matador in his rectum. But in the bull's defense, the matador did say he was horny. <laughs> 
so bad. I'm ashamed. <laughs> During a recent trip in China, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen confessed that she ate hallucinogenic mushrooms at a restaurant. And here we thought the only one who ate mushrooms was her barber. <laughs> Earlier this week, there was a near collision at the Boston airport between jets from American and Spirit Air, which proves not even the pilots want to fly Spirit. <laughs> and finally, in San Francisco, driverless cars are reportedly causing traffic to get backed up. If only the homeless were that backed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a poop joke. <laughs> little, little transient excrement humor. <laughs> All right, to the news. Should trans players switch to checkers even if they cut off their peckers. <laughs> Probably didn't need to say that, but the International Chess Federation, the only organization dorkier than the Star Trek Federation, says it will abolish the women's titles that a female player has earned if she becomes a he. This, of course, is earth-shattering news to the one nerd who follows international chess. <laughs> in addition, trans women are banned from competing in women's events, eliminating the slight advantage of moving pawns with their giant hands. <laughs> but don't cry, Dylan Mulvaney. You'll always have beer pong. <laughs> and a penis. <laughs> now, they're making the change because women's titles are considered less valuable than men's. So a so-called woman grandmaster wouldn't be transferred to a general grandmaster, even though you'd save award money by only paying her 70 cents on the dollar. A sexist would say. See, see? Now, I admit, I don't know much about the fascinating and time-honored game of chess, although you should hear me yell, you sank my battleship. But why are there men's and women's divisions at all? Perhaps it's to prevent those tournaments from becoming orgies. But it's, but it's not like a physical sport where biological males have an innate advantage. I think it's weird that there aren't more women in chess. I mean, there are many successful women everywhere, including high levels of government. <laughs> After all, being great at chess doesn't call for muscle mass. Just look at the men. <laughs> <laughs> Puny runs. Instead, it requires logic, patience, and abstract thinking. But if they add parallel parking, you broads are doomed. Wow, yet another sexist would all say. Right, all right, all right, right. Buck, how you doing there, champ? I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, uh, you don't care. I'm going on vacation. This is my last thing before I go to Scotland for a week. So I'll oh, be really? wearing a kilt and getting drunk every day. Uh, I wish I'd asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Scott. <laughs> Buck, do you, how do you feel about chess? This is kind of an interesting dilemma here. They're coming in, in it from a different angle. Is it going to shock you to know the guy who has boat shoes in four different colors took chess <laughs> lessons as a kid? Because that's actually true. You took I did, chess? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's actually real. I took chess lessons as a kid for a little while. It was, it was fun. And then, then I hit uh, puberty, and then it got, you know, I was interested in other things. Yeah. So I spent less time playing chess. That's when you got the but. station wagon, <laughs> otherwise, known, otherwise known as a shagging wagon, right? Wood paneled sides. Yes. I will have you know that is now a classic car, and is actually far more valuable than people would have anticipated. Imagine if you had sex in it. <laughs> you know, uh, but Thanks I, look, for coming on, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to punch your mother in the mouth when we leave. <laughs> Are, do you think there's uh, biological differences in playing chess? Well, this is, uh, there's no answer that's going to make people happy with this other than you should just open up this to men and women playing and see what happens. I, I mean, the, the only way you could say there's a biological advantage would be to go the Larry Summers Harvard route. You remember that? The mm -hmm. president of Harvard? Yeah. Who's like, maybe we have just theoretically fewer women getting fields medals in mathematics because of some. And it, that was one of the original yeah. woke cancellations. Yeah, he I mean, was he gone. was destroyed. The guy was the treasury secretary. He had a great role in the uh, social network. So. Yeah. 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 And then he was gone because he. So you just can't. You, but, but you can't answer that. Well, how? You can't. I've said it before, and I will do it again for all of you. <laughs> I think that men are better than women at chess, but that's because women are more emotionally intelligent than men are, which means that they're far less likely to have the kind of social life that would force them to resort to competitive chess. Uh. No, because 
Even if you're playing competitive chess as a woman, you probably have at least some friends, right? Yeah. So you're using some of your brain to form meaningful emotional connections, which is great, but also is probably not an advantage in a robot brain sport like chess. But um, people only care about women in chess if they're hot, like that TV show on Netflix. Yes, exactly. <laughs> she, she was completely delicious, so people, they gave a poo. But about most chess, the guys look like they crawled out from under a rock 20 years ago, so nobody cares. Yeah, and by the way, did you know that that Netflix show was fiction? Right. I thought it was real when I was watching it, that there was this amazing female chess player that like could envision these things, and then somebody told me it was made up, and I yeah. felt like, of course it's made up. So you had to throw the glove away that you wore when you were watching it. Yes. Uh. <laughs> but no, it's not really a sport. People call it a sport, but it's not. If you don't shave your legs, it's not competitive. <laughs> yeah, that is. Did you ever play chess? No, I had a social life as a kid. Yeah. I'm not lonely. No. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Wow. You know, we're losing the uh, chess playing audience right now. You're not. <laughs> they don't. You're not. No. I, I, I was with Kat until she said emotional intelligence. <laughs> and I was like, what? Uh, chess, maybe for the. Chess is something that in football we played a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and weightlifting, we used to do this activity at the end when you were exhausted, you had to play speed chess. Mm -hmm. Because that's what makes you, when you're most exhausted, it makes you think more. Chess, I play chess with my daughters because mm -hmm. I want them always thinking two moves ahead. And what they did was, with this was brilliant, with all the sports that are having all the problems with transgender women invading, what they did was amazing. They didn't say you couldn't play. They just said, we're going to research it and figure it out. It's going to take us about, I don't know, two years. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll <laughs> let you know. That's chess. That's brilliance. They, they leapfrogged the whole problem because you can't yell at somebody for researching it. They're like, I'm going to read the instructions. And when we figure it out, we'll get back to you. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So they avoided the problem without actually having to solve the problem. And on top of that, if you switch, you lose your right, because trophies. Because what it is, is right? what, what it really comes down to, what this whole thing has been is mediocre biological men who decide to claim they're women to be what? To get attention and be successful. Because mm -hmm. they want to beat women in, in sports because the way things worked out physically, men are stronger than women, okay? Mm -hmm. Women tend to be smarter. But it doesn't always translate over to chess because chess is more confined. It's one move in one moment under a short amount of time. So they don't know if there's a difference or not. Plus, as Kat said, most women aren't interested in chess. Usually, so for some reason, it was a very man's game. Mm -hmm. So, And now women are starting to get involved in it. So they're kind of behind. But again, it goes back to the thing. When you take away the opportunity without getting in their face about it, there's no complaints. There's no, there's no one, not that there's going to be, I don't think there's a huge amount of transgender women chess players marching outside of Fox right now demanding equal play. Oh, that would be amazing. I'd love to watch that. It, <laughs> it's really tough, this whole thing for gay men, like my husband and I, the male-female thing. Yeah. Because, you know, my husband's stronger, but I have the money, so it's hard to decide. <laughs> and I can't be a woman because I'm a comedian. <laughs> so... <laughs> I didn't write the rules, Wait babe. A minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> the way it is. 20-second timeout. You were cool with the pedophile joke. <laughs> he makes one joke. <laughs> And I can't be a pedophile because I hate children. So. <laughs> <laughs> and they laugh. <laughs> That's not even the worst jokes he has. Trust <laughs> me. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.